Okay, basically the first half of my book is all about um, why we make the choices that we do and the, the sort of the patterns in human behavior that scientists have spent the last 50 years figuring out. And one of the big patterns is that basically we love to hand off decision making to systems outside of us or sort of cognitively outside of us because we don't like making tough decisions. We don't like making decisions that take a lot of mental energy and we don't like making decisions that are uh, morally ambiguous and ethically dubious and difficult, right? We just don't like that stuff. We're built to take shortcuts. That's really important to understand. Then the second half of the book is all about how AI plays into that. It is going to reflect back at us the patterns of uh, our behavior and package them up for us in this seemingly infallible technological little wrapping that's going to make us believe whatever these systems tell us. Even though those systems are basically just reflecting back at us the patterns of our own behavior, most of which or many of which are totally automatic. And that if you really looked at them, you'd think, oh, I actually don't want to be that person. I want to be this other higher form of person. And one version of this is uh, there's a guy named Joseph Weizenbaum who in the 1960s created the first chat bot and he, he called it Eliza and he dressed it up as a therapist. It was basically just a teletype machine that you would type a thing in and it would reflect your responses back at you in this scripted way. Uh, he tested it out first on his secretary and the story is that within five minutes she turned around and told him, I need you to leave the room because this is too uh, you know, sensitive a conversation. Um, within a few years, the American Psychological Association was predicting the end of therapy. Carl Sagan went on TV and predicted we were all going to go and, you know, uh, do robot therapy. And people, in fact, went on to build training modules for therapists based on his early work. Even though he'd been just playing around with this thing just to see if it would work and dress it up that way, just to see sort of how humans would react. Joseph Weizenbaum, he quit the field. He was so dismayed by what happened, he thought, we really shouldn't be playing with this stuff. We're too gullible as a species. Uh, and so he basically, you know, he quit the field. I tell people that story now and they laugh and they say, why would he have quit the field? You know, he had a great product working. That is not the point of that story. And to me, seeing chat GPT and seeing people wanting to write term papers with it and wanting to build businesses on it when this thing is, you know, it's just reflecting our patterns back at us. Um, but in this packaging that we are cognitively powerless to resist, that is what makes me anxious.